Felix here, and good morning to you. What a happy Monday morning it is. And then you see my headline, you go, oh no, he's at it again. Well, let me walk you through it. And I'm going to walk you through not just what the media is currently saying, but what the Fed just said, what the data points are, what we're guiding on, how we're trading it, how we're making money out of it, how you can do the same thing. That's what this is all about. Ask your questions in the chat. Also post where you're tuning in from. It's always, always lovely to see. And let's get cracking. Of course, none of the following is financial advice. Nope. It isn't. It isn't. It's just an old banker in a strangely striped shirt. It looks a little bit like pajamas. I know. Uh, it's very comfortable. I highly recommend it. And they're not pajamas. No, 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 they're not. Um, look at the pre-market here. Undecided, I think is the word I'd say. When the big boys, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Apples are moving only 0.0123%, it kind of means, hmm, we're not feeling all that optimistic today, right? What about the cat, the cat bounce we're expecting today? Well, if you are subscribed to our newsletter, the newsletter of all newsletters, because it actually gives you tradable insight. We actually set up trades that make money. Uh, links down below, felixfriends.org slash sub. Here it is, felixfriends.org slash sub, like the sandwich. And what are we saying? We're saying even a dead cat will bounce if it falls some great height. Thankfully, none of my cats are in the room, so they're not going to hear me say that, but precisely, and we'll walk you through that in a second. But Let's first of all look at leading headline today on Bloomberg, not just in the US, but all around the world, all the additions running with why a US, US recession is still likely and coming soon. I kind of disagree on the soon part. I think we'll have to get a minor sort of democratic um, tick box exercise out of the way first. It's called an election. Why are they saying that? Let's get to that in a second. First of all, let's hear what this smart gentleman has to say. Fed President Thomas Barkin, he gave a lovely podcast interview thingy. You can listen to it if you want to make your day a little bit less pleasant. And he's basically saying, look, we're not able to break the housing market. We've tried. We've tried really hard. We got the crowbar out. We hit people over the head with the three sledgehammers. We showed up to open houses and said, are you crazy? Why are you buying houses with these interest rates? Didn't do the job. This is the home price index, and they haven't managed to tank it. Why not? Well, there is fundamentally just a shortage of houses. And what he's saying is because people are spending more time at home and less time at work, they actually value their homes more. They're willing to spend more on their houses. Um, I think fundamentally also like, why would you sell your house if you haven't got a new one to, to, to move into? And it's fairly hard to find a new one to move into, at least in, the, in some sectors of it. So he's saying, look, if you're spending five days a week at home, three days a week at home, seven days a week at home, your house matters a lot more, your office matters, your home office matters more, your patio matters more, your furniture matters more, and that's what he's saying. So they're saying, we can't break the housing market, so we're going to have to like attack something else, which means we're going to have to go higher and higher with our interest rates and longer because we need to really tank the employment market. And people are also not that keen to fire people because art and their experience to replace them. So they basically just have to do more. You see? That's it. Very nice, isn't it? He's got little fangs, doesn't he? Doesn't he have little fangs? So what does Bloomberg say? And then I'll walk you through my my, my um, lovely thing here. Um, sounds okay? Somebody can't hear me? Right. Okay. The government shutdown isn't happening. That's good. Um, did I read something about Taylor Swift? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's skip that. But look, they're saying the soft landing hopes and the hard landing realities. Um, there's a little chart I had here. I was actually going to possibly make a video on it, and then I didn't. Can you see that? Probably not ideal, right? Probably not ideal. What that shows to you, oh, we could make it a little bit bigger. There we go. There we go. What this little, lovely little chart shows you is that every time the little black line goes up a lot, what happens afterwards? Well, there's always a crisis. Uh, there was the credit crisis of 2008. There was the dot-com crash. There was the Fed taper tantrum. And at the moment, yeah, we're, we've got a bank run going on this year, right? Still, still going. Banks have lost 25% of deposits. 
and you trust them with your money. Seriously, 25%. If interest rates go higher, that number is going to go to the moon. But don't worry about it. The Fed has suspended accounting rules. They don't have to re evaluate that. It's just sitting on their books at nominal value. Like, no crisis happened. It's just baffling, really. So, yeah, I think there are a lot of reasons. Uh, if you watch my video from, from Friday or Saturday, whenever it was, um, unemployment is likely to go up because the Fed just, just keeps going, right? That's what the, this chart here says. And uh, the hikes are about to bite hard. And Milton Friedman, indeed, he says, monetary policy operates with long and variable lags and very, very long lags this time around because all the big companies that normally get hit by it, they had all gobbled up tons of debt at zero interest rates. So they're not really affected by it. And all you Americans out there are sitting on your 20 and 30 year mortgages with fixed interest rates. You're not that affected by it either. So the lag takes a little bit longer. But yeah, we've got the auto strike, which is definitely a kicker. Uh, the oil market is up 25% since June. Treasury yields are up. Uh, there is a global slump. Uh, the shutdown is thankfully not happening. And um, Beyonce can only do so much, indeed. Uh, extra savings have run out. I mentioned this last week. The top 80, sorry, the bottom 80% of the US, so everybody except for the top 20, are out of money. No more money, no more savings, no more cash. They're in debt. So they're not going to go out and, and buy another Peloton bike. You know, remember the Peloton bike? That was meant to be a, a thing. So delinquency rates are, are low, it's true. They are starting to climb up, though. We can see that here on this lovely, lovely little chart here. The credit squeeze is just getting getting started, indeed. Um, we're just getting there. And we're going to go higher and higher for longer means, essentially, the um, companies fail. We're just all kind of, kind of seeing. But coming a little bit to this, so Trading Floor Whispers, I honestly recommend you subscribe to it. Go to felixfranz.org slash sub. This one here at felixfranz.org slash sub. And um, we're basically making the argument that there's going to be so much debt issued from the government that $1.9 trillion in borrowing. What's going to happen with that? Well, it's going to suck $1.9 trillion out of the market away from stocks. So you still think stocks are going to go up, do you? And I think they might go up in the short term. I think there might be a little bit of a bounce. I think there's the technical setup for it. But... Um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be concerned. I'd be very, very concerned. And I'm not a doom and gloomer. I, I really am not. Um, <laughs> whatever happens, I'm shorting the S&P. Either that's towards 4,380 or below 4,200. Which one to look like is, is more likely? So we're going we're gonna to set up some trades. Uh, we're going to share them with you. So, so subscribe over there. Um, overall, by the way, we are up. How much are we up by? 100 and... Um, 110% at the moment, return on capital employed. If you want to learn how we do that and figure out how I do that in three, four hours a week, and in my opinion, potentially anybody can do that. I'm not promising you returns, obviously, but I'm saying you can le certainly learn the method. Go to Felix Friends at Oxford Webinar. I'll teach it to you on Friday. I'll teach it to 500 people. 150 have signed up. There are 350 spots left available. They will go. They always do. And I do that intentionally in a small group because I want to be able to answer your questions. And if I do it any larger, I've done it before with like 2,000 people and yeah, we just just, we just don't get the, through the Q&A. And I want to actually be able to answer every single one of your questions. That's why we do it that way. Felix Friends at Org slash webinar. Uh, Tesla down 3.9%, um, really? I've got, ooh, 4.3% down. That just happened. What just happened there? Thank you very much for letting us know. Who, who was that? Jan. Appreciate that, Jan. Uh, Tesla. What, what the frick just happened? Fall in third quarter deliveries. Ooh, misses. Plant factory shutdown. Missed market estimates for the third quarter. Um, still 435,000 vehicles. Isn't anything to be sniffed at. But we'd expect it. Hang on. Oh, so we were expecting another 9,000 vehicle, vehicles there. So, hmm, interesting. That's not glorious for the EV space, is it? How's that hitting our friends at NEO? Ooh, down 1.6% too now. 
That was green earlier, wasn't it? Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at the minute chart here. Even the Tesla bombshell hit. Uh, yeah, that was green earlier. Uh, let's look at the Tesla chart. Six minutes ago. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's something, isn't it? You only need one little thing. And look, suddenly there is more red, isn't it? There's a lot more red out there. It's, it's sentiment that drives the market in the short term. In the long term, it's fundamentals. In the short term, it's sentiment. Uh, missed indeed. You sold five minutes before the drop. Uh, well done. Are American consumers having trouble finding $80,000 for a new EV? It is very strange, isn't it? Um, I was thinking about buying a car this week and I, I don't really need it. So I think I'll just do it a little later. Not because I haven't got the money, but I just don't really need it. Um, Bailey, what's the need for a phone number for the webinar? Use it for communication spam at a later day. Bailey, I shall call you every single morning from now on until the end of time and ask you how you're doing. Um, they closed the plant down, um, short uh, causing panic. Yeah, so it was planned, so it's not exactly a huge surprise. Um, and lazy analysts never updated their, their, their estimates. That sounds about right. Uh, Adam, NVTA, yeah, I know nothing about it. I understand absolutely nothing about G genetic sequencing or whatever that is. Um, someone's explained it to me. I know it's up 40% pre-market. Who knows? Um, I don't invest in anything I don't understand. And stuff that's gone up 40% is, in my book, the latest thing that I probably shouldn't be in. So it's been a very, very, very long falling knife. And this might just turn it around, 40% up. But it's also trading at 60 cents. Again, something I wouldn't invest in. Uh, so yeah, it just sort of misses a lot of my tick boxes. Um, market cap's tiny. I don't understand what the heck they do. It moves 40% in a day. It's it's a penny stock. It's a cent stock even. So yeah, not, 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 not my cup of tea. Buy a VIN fast. <laughs> um, Mullen hasn't sent me their car yet, no, even though I am the CEO. Um, but yeah, no, no, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying I don't understand it. If you understand something about gene editing or sequencing or something, brilliant. Um, one of my mentees is a surgeon, for example. He understands a lot about that space and he invests heavily in that space because he understands it. Like, 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 have a lot of sense. For me, it's like gobbledygook. So I, I don't know what the heck's going on. Our trade should be doing quite nicely um, if the market tanks a little bit. We're bearish on the QQQ, for example which um, we're down this morning. So that should be quite nice. Uh, and, and the X added volatility should be quite good. The VIX, the VIX is up, which sounds like a Swiss. Do you think it sounds like a Swiss cough syrup or something or sweet? Up 5% at 1843. So we're bouncing. Thank you, Tesla. Um, Danzo, I don't own any jeans. Danzo, that's a bit of a random statement, don't you think? What's next? Someone's saying, I don't wear any underwear or something. Uh, Thomas Clever Monkey. Uh, anything I missed here? 33 trillion. Uh, actually, Rolf, the, the US has a lot more than 33 trillion debt. If you count the, uh, the Medicare and Medicaid and all that stuff, that's another 70 or 80 trillion on top. So it's actually more like 100 trillion if they did their books right, but they don't. Um, Futures were up. What happened? I think Monday happened. Uh, the realization that the Fed's going to keep going, uh, that a recession is going to come, that $1.9 trillion of debt to be issued this year till the end of year is going to suck money out of markets. And um, that the Fed is failing to break the housing market and the unemployment ma labor market. And therefore, they just have to keep going and going and going and going. They're like... They're like little bunny rabbits on a Duracell battery. And there's some product placement there for you. I don't worry. I don't get paid for that. Um, don't invest in gobbledygook. Peter Lynch said that too. Don't invest in what you either don't know or can't explain to someone else. Precisely. In gene editing, I mean, I've got a friend who is in a related business and he has explained it to me. And I look at him afterwards with very glazed eyes and I go, is, this, is it over? Can we order another drink now? Uh, and, and that's sort of it. I couldn't possibly 
explain it to you. And if I can't explain it to you, I wouldn't want to invest in it. U.S. unfunded liabilities are 194 trillion. Oh, nice! And it's a little, it's an extra 100 trillion. What's 100 trillion between friends, Rolf? If you need to inflate away debt, why are they fighting inflation, Thomas? Ah, it's just, it's just the only thing they know how to do. Well, they know how to cause it, and then they know how to try and inflate it away. The Fed has always done too much. There has never ever been a there's just never been a scenario where the Fed has done too little. Let me see if I can find the chart I wanted to show you. Yeah, here it is. Brilliant. Got it. I showed you a printout earlier, which probably wasn't particularly useful. So every single time, the, the black line is the Fed fund, the, the interest rate, essentially. And what happens in 87, they raised it we got the savings and loan crisis, right? Then in the early 90s, they raised it. We got the bond market crash. Um, in 97, 8 or so, we got Asian LTCM thing. In the two, 1999, we got the dot-com crisis, right? In 2005, we got, or six rather, seven, we got the credit crisis. You know, the, the house of cards, that was the housing market. In 2019, 20, we got the Fed taper tantrum. And right now, we got a bank crisis. Four banks failed this year, and hundreds of other banks are basically illiquid and out of business and haven't got any, not enough deposits left. It's just that the Fed has sort of glossed over it and said, it's all fine. Don't worry about it. No, it's not really happening. And, and, and that's where we are right now. So every single time the Fed hikes rates, something crashes. And I can't see why this time would be any different. And on top of the rates, they're shredding money like they've never done before. So yes, there'll be a recession. Is a call for November for Tesla a good idea, says Audley. Now, of course, I can't answer that because that would be financial advice, but I can tell you what you might want to look at. So you go to optionswatch.io because it's the most brilliant website anybody has ever come up with. I came up with it. <laughs> you click on Tesla. Well, the first thing you see is that the IV of Tesla is 33. So that's relatively low. It's out of 100. So buying options is actually not super expensive. But if you buy a November call option, let's say you buy 17th November call option, I'm, I'm really not saying you should. And um, first of all, Tesla has to go up 20%, $20. It's 8%. You have a 33% chance of making money. Hang on. Let me show you that. There we go. Your probability of making money is 33%. If you went to a casino and put your money on red, you'd have a 47.4% chance of making money. It'd be better than this setup. So is it a good idea? Is it a good idea with rates going up? $1.9 trillion of debt being issued, which is going to suck money out of the market, and all the noise and craziness going on in the economy. Is that a good idea? I don't know. I'm not, not telling you. You've got to come up to your own, your own conclusion. Do you buy trade gold and silver at these prices? River says, um, I, I trade a little bit of gold and silver options usually. Um, I do have some physical gold. That's the, um, the prepper in me. Uh, but I'm not not... Not, not, not sizable positions. Wasn't there a perfect Fed in the 90s? You mean the Greenspan myth? He was just so boring, nobody could pay any attention. No, no, there wasn't. Um, will the Fed be successful in crashing the US housing market? No, the commercial market is definitely coming down. Even Bloomberg's woken up to that. It's a headline on that today. Severe crash is coming for US office properties, investors say. Been, I've been saying that for like a year. Uh, so yeah, commercial property values are getting hit hard by the Fed's tightening campaign. Why? They don't have fixed mortgages for long periods of time. They have shorter durations on their financing. So therefore, as they have to roll over the debt, and now they have to pay like 9% rather than 3%, they can't cover with cash flow the, the difference. The offices are all empty because everyone's working from home because it's glorious and you can wear striped shirts like this that would get you arrested in the office. And therefore, uh, they're going out of business. Very, very simple. So the commercial property isn't worth what it once was. 
Um, Al says, ever since you had said kid had cat bounce, my cat's been watching you. I apologize to your cat. I apologize to a cat earlier, actually. We walked along the, the beach here and Winston barked, which he very rarely does. And uh, there was a cat about this far away from him and not moving. And the cat was like, I'm not moving. You try coming closer. Um, he did look a little scared there, so I apologized to the cat um, on Winston's behalf. Have you looked at super microcomputers? Reeds have tanked hard. They have, yes, they have. And that was the whole, uh, you can't get your money back out of um, Blackstone uh, Reeds, which is rarely a good sign. My son's girlfriend has a naked cat. Um, it's a strange sentence somehow, Thomas. Somehow it's a very strange sentence. You mean one of those hairless ones? Um, I guess they're just like cats, aren't they, without the fluffiness. Is pre market trading. Top, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, could I please loan your cat? No, 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 you can't. We need her. She's, um, she's very special. She's very, very special. She uh, cuddles one of us in the house about 23 and a half hours a day. It's inc incredible, this cat. I got up late this morning. I literally slept until 10 o'clock, which was lovely. She could jump back into bed and say, oi, why are you still asleep? If you'd still I'd known that, I would have slept, you know, cuddled up with you. It's very, very sweet. So um, this is the pre-market. Tesla down 3%, missing delivery numbers by about 9,000 vehicles, which isn't really all that much. And they had planned to shut down factories. It isn't a huge surprise, I, I, I would argue. But it seems to have shaken and stirred the market ever so slightly. NVIDIA is still green. Apple slightly red, though. Google slightly red. And there's a story out that Apple might replace Google as a search engine. Google pays Apple about $8 billion a year, I want to say, uh, in advertising revenue as a sort of advertising share. So if Apple came up with its own search engine, then it could keep all the ad money itself. That would make a lot of sense, if you would make a lot of sense. And I think with AI, it's actually a lot easier to build a search engine now than it was previously. So I, I think it's a great idea. Microsoft apparently offered help. <laughs> As in, uh, we want to we cut off that. So that'd be an interesting move. Apparently there's a lovely character, says Thomas. Oh, I'm sure, like, why wouldn't it? I mean, it just doesn't have any hair. Like, it's, you know... Bold people can have lovely characters. <laughs> uh, it's just a cat. Alexander, do we have a course on uh, options trading for beginners? We certainly do. Come and join me on, on Friday. I'm running a live trading training here. BDXrentsalog slash webinar. Uh, sign up. There were like 300 odd spots available when I, when I started this call. There'll be less by the end of it. And they will definitely fill up. And I'll walk you through my entire trading protocol, my whole strategy, what we do, how we do it. We'll do some live trading together. You get to see how I'm up 110% so far on, on the year on capital employed. We did 126% last year and how we do that without staring at charts, three hours a week, four hours a week, and how it's tremendous fun. Um, is Apple green or red? Uh, it's uh, un undecided. I'd say 0.1% up at the moment, but that's sort of meaningless. Don't forget to hit the like button. Absolutely. 88 likes, 600 people watching. Uh, that's obviously uh, how you feel about it this. <laughs> what a waste of time. I don't know what I'm here for. Smash the like button. Uh, did you invest in Mexico yet? Um, no, 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 no. I haven't. No tequila plants or uh, anything like that. Uh, that's probably very upsetting for some Mexicans, isn't it? Um, probably a good idea because a lot of trade has shifted from China to Mexico. Mexico is becoming the China of the US. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and it, I mean, it's not exactly news. When, when it's Volkswagen put their first plant there, was it the 70s or the 80s or something like that? It's, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. But uh, yeah, it's just obviously geographically a good place for it. And um, it makes a lot of sense. What do you think about Tesla's Cybertruck? Um, I don't think it would be my first vehicle of choice. I think the sort of sharp edges and bulletproof glass I look a little silly in, really. But... Uh, I mean, you Americans like very large 
vehicle. So it's pretty edgy looking. It's different, which is always cool. Most cars are fairly boring and standard and look the same. So I think it's a clever, clever idea. It's just different. And I think if you want to really build a brand and get recognized, then do different. Don't do slightly different shade of orange, you know, or silver or whatever it might be for cars. So I think it's a good idea. See, Felix can make more likes or more money by the end of 2023. <laughs> well, the likes are coming in a little bit, which is good. Have you tried growing a beard? Well, this is getting really random, isn't it? It's sort of one of those um, ask me anything. I, I have grown a beard, yes. Um, not actually out of choice. I had, um, I had uh, a lovely tropical illness, which meant I, uh, well, I kind of almost died. And then I was just, it was so flippin' painful that I couldn't shave. It's just... It attacks your nerves, so it makes your nerves incredibly sensitive. So I didn't shave for about three weeks, and I um, I looked like a homeless person, I, I, I thought, but I had a beard. How much time do you need to anticipate for your training, says Robert? Um, we do about a good hour of tr solid training, and we probably do about another half hour of Q&A or longer if, if you guys ask more questions, which I'm very, very happy to answer. So something in that range, and a half, 90 minutes, something like that. Uh, grow a beard and say the end is nigh. Yeah, that's the sort of thing we put in the newsletter, um, which, by the way, I, just, I highly recommend you sign up for felixvenzer.org slash sub. Um, we've actually done some very, very profitable trades in here in the last couple of weeks and months. I mean, really. Uh, and we explain them. We explain them properly. And look, you get pictures like that. Um, what was the headline today? I pitied the fool. I think that was it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, you know, if you actually want to get some real trade walk walkthroughs when we do them um, and, and, you know, stuff that we actually like, then um, subscribe. FelixFrenz.org slash sub. Like the sandwich. How many trades per week do you typically do? I, I would love to do typically about, I'd love to do 20, 25 trades a week. Um, I usually do a little bit less because I get busy and stuff happens and life gets in the way and I just at dinner on the beach and, you know, you need time for all of these things. So I literally, literally, literally usually do a little bit less. What's Winston's biggest position? Um, I'd say uh, carrots and, um, and cucumbers, probably. Looking homeless keeps you safe. It depends on where you live. Um, I, I, I tend to try and be in places where I can look like, you know, wear whatever I want and, and nobody really minds. Um, so that's a, that's a, that's a choice. Glad uh, you didn't die. That's very kind of you, Tarek. Thank you very much. Uh, do you think tech, big tech would crash the most? I think there is a question of growth, right? How much growth is in there? Uh, how good is free cash flow? So NVIDIA, for example, is living off expected future growth. Um, something like Apple, less so. It's more like a free cash flow play at this point, I think. So I think it depends a little bit on, on, on which, which of the big tech guys you're, you're in. Initially, when the market comes down, usually there is a flight to safety. So people buy Microsoft and Apple and Amazon and stuff like that. And then once it goes down a little bit more, they start selling that off too. So I think there are some techier less profitable stocks that's got gone up a heck of a lot this year that I think probably would get hit harder. US is a million homeless people. I think the homeless problem is largely, it's obviously an, an addiction problem, but an addiction problem is usually a trauma problem. If you look at the exceptionally high percentage of homeless people who are um, veterans, uh, that's kind of the shocking thing, right? So they get traumatized in war because we send them there and then they come back and we go, have some drugs lie in the corner. That's kind of shocking. It's the same in London, by the way, Danzo. Uh, something like 60% of homeless people or something like that in London are, uh, are veterans. So that's kind of, that's kind of a huge fading, I, I think. I think on behalf of the, the military, they should really look after them. Um, are you doing some trading in your group today? I uh, haven't quite decided yet. I, 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 I might do. I might do. 
Um, anyone having a problem with Think or Swim this morning? Uh, not me, but it happens sometimes. They're merging it with Schwab, so that might explain it. If you want to run through over, like, well, just a quick recap here. Uh, Bloomberg's run with this lovely headline all day, like all around the world, why a recession is still likely and coming. And actually, they make a fairly good case. I, I wouldn't disagree with them on, on that. Uh, this lovely chap from the Fed, Fed President Barkin, essentially is saying, look, housing is bloody strong. The labor market's bloody strong. But we will keep going until we break something, which isn't exactly reassuring. Um, economic data out this morning at 10 a.m. is manufacturing PMI. I wouldn't expect that to be glorious. And then we've got Chair Powell speaking at 11, Harkup speaking at 11, same time. So pick, pick your, you know, poison. And then at 1 and at 1.30 and at 7.30, you get three more Fed presidents speaking. So plenty of that. Tomorrow again, Bostage speaking at 8 in the morning. We've got jobs data out tomorrow. Uh, that's obviously a big deal. Jolts is a job opening. It's a big deal. It ha moves more quickly. Uh, so if that comes down faster than expected, it would indicate a recession is on the way. And the quits, you don't quit your job when you think the recession, the you can't get a new job, essentially. So you watch out for that. And then um, later in the week, Thursday, we get job cuts again, challenger ones that might be might be interesting. And and Friday, non-farm payroll. So it's a real, it's a real job week. <laughs> real job week. Uh, Carl says, ding, 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 indeed. Ding, ding, ding. Let's have a quick look at the live market. That's actually live, live, live. And Tesla down 2% now on uh, missed delivery expectations, although that was sort of fairly predictable, apparently. Uh, Procter & Gamble down. Um, the big tech boys are basically flat. Can't quite decide. NVIDIA is up 1.2%. Um, let's have a look at how's our portfolio faring this morning. Um, looking all right. QQQ is ever so slightly up. Uh, eBay looks good. That's exactly where we want it. Um, oil is pretty much going sideways. And SPY is coming down, which is exactly what we were hoping for. So VIX is popping up some more, 3% up today. And let's go on the day here. Yeah, that looks about right. Down the, you're in Shropshire. Yeah, that's one of the, Nice, nicer parts of the country, right? Yeah, there are not many homeless people around there. I mean, it wouldn't be much point, right? If you were sitting there and begging and somebody walks past every six days, <laughs> you wouldn't make a lot, would you? So they're there. that's why they never navigate that. Uh, Murta, um, we also ding, ding, ding in capitals. You see, you get told off for that by our little, little bot that keeps us safe. Anybody who hasn't already, sign up for the live trading training on Friday. Make sure you get your hands on our core financial freedom program. Links down below, felixrenzelog slash stocks. It's 99% off because I continue to believe that you deserve financial education and money shouldn't get in the way of that. So you go to the website, felixrenzelog slash stocks, and you only pay 1% of the ticket price you see there. Is your VIX trade bearish, um, Robert? And no, it's actually a funny, it's a, it's a leftover from, from an old VIX trade that... Um, actually didn't make any money and um, I couldn't get out of this position. So it actually, funnily enough, looks like this. So we, we make no money at all, essentially, on this, uh, unless VIX should come down, but it doesn't matter. Like we, this is a zero, zero sum position. It's just there wasn't any volume to close out of it. And I just thought I'd leave it because there really isn't any, any real harm unless VIX overnight drops to 12 or to $11, which seems fairly unlikely. So it's just it's just sitting there um, at, at this point. But no, it's basically got a, a zero downside. <laughs> so um, no risk there. Um, Darvind. Palantir, nice and green. Let's have a look at some of our favorites here. Pre-market, uh, not pre-market, uh, early into the market. Palantir nice and green, indeed. Um, keeps keeps going up and up and up. Uh, a video coming out from me on that in a moment. And is Neo getting beaten up by, by big bully Tesla? Just a little bit, 1.4% down, dropping below $9, which of course isn't glorious. Um, and the reason for that is the giant that is Tesla down two and a half percentage points. Doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, really, but then the market doesn't always make a lot of sense. NVIDIA is up 2.2% today. 
inching towards the 50 day moving average line. 450 is the mark to watch, I'd say, on that one. Apple, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, still below two moving average lines. So 175 is where you need to get to, and then 180. So the way, way to go. Uh, NASDAQ is in the green, true, but only just 0.3%. So it's still. It's not exactly a buy signal. You know, there is a, there's a gap down. We're significantly below the 50-day moving average. And the, yeah, so I, I, I'd call this indecision day so far. I don't think anybody really, yeah. Google, Meta are green now. Apple is green. But this is very early in the day, so this can change a little bit. But yeah, Tesla's losses are, are getting cut down a bit, which is good. Um, And the, on the NHS, yeah, as I said, full video coming out on that later today. I, I also doubt that they're going to get the full contract. I think there will be a British element in there for the for the data storage or data protection or some nonsense like that. They're spending $2 million at the moment uh, walking around hospitals with clipboards. £2 million pounds even, which sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Huge waste of money. Um, subscribers growing nicely. Carl, that's very kind of you to notice. Indeed, um, more of you are um, feeding the urge to smash the subscribe button. Uh, which is brilliant. Um, Faridun, $600 pounds profit with trading with 4,000. Brilliant. Well done. Analyze every trade, write them down, have a written trading protocol, and don't deviate from your rules. That's the way you make money. And the most useful, I think, advice ever given by anybody is learn to love small losses. Seriously. It's the way to, to, real, to real money. Um, But a seven hundred pound net loss. Okay, um, so your 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 profit is um, so you were down two thousand three hundred on four thousand, and now you're only down seventeen hundred. Okay, then you really need to work on the on the risk management. You should not lose seventeen hundred out of four k. Uh, that's a far too large a position percentage wise to lose. Uh, you need to figure out what your what your risk management is because it's clearly needs some work. Um, 1300 net loss. Now. So I'm, I'm ha happy for you. It's heading in the right direction, but yeah, you need to figure out like, how is it possible to allow losses that, that, that large? Like when do you exit? What are your adjustments? How are you diversifying? You know, what, what's the correlation between your stocks? What's your overall portfolio position? All those things. You need to put those pieces together to make sure that doesn't happen. Danzo, the NHS got privatized by Tony Blair. Sorry, it, it, it happened a long time ago. I know that's the perception, but um, good old Teflon Tony sold it down the river <laughs> to, to private equity. So there really isn't, is, isn't any hope. And now it's this totally fragmented, bizarre beast uh, that costs probably about three times what it should. So yeah, I, I don't think a bit of data is going gonna, is gonna to break it. Um, knowledge Seeker, your $5,000 pounds is up 700 Congratulations. Brilliant. Uh, that's amazing. Technical misunderstanding with buy and sell prices. Newbie mistake. How are you doing? Stop the live trading. Go to the paper trading account and do that for six more weeks. And if you are consistently profitable for those six weeks, think about going live again. You don't want to make mistakes and lose money. It's just too expensive. Seriously, use paper. It's so much cheaper. Simulated. Um, the, the NHS is a... Is a, is a, is a Terrible administrative horror, uh, but you know that's that's that's. There is a lovely thing in one of my favorite British TV shows that says uh, people feel good about taxpayers feel good about throwing money at the NHS. They think it somehow absorbs them or something or something, so they keep doing it. Apple nicely in green now. Nvidia up almost two percent. Tesla down two and a half percent. Amazon flat. Meta green. Google green. So QQQ will be looking quite green now. Well, will it last? I think that's the fundamental question here. Uh, the, the 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 cat bounce is is in in full swing it seems, but um, be careful out there. That's what I'd say. I'd be very very careful out there. I appreciate you watching. I thank you for smashing the like button. At least 184 of you did. The ones who didn't, you know, sod off. Um, Uh, Faridun, if you're chasing 
If you're chasing the latest thing, the latest news, and you've got FOMO, seriously, stop trading. Uh, traders don't try to chase the latest news. In fact, there are technical traders, we were talking about this yesterday in our group session, who don't read the news <laughs> because um, it just distracts you. So if you're losing money that's avoidable and you're just chasing the latest thing, then you're probably gambling. And I'd highly recommend that you stop. But uh, it's, of course, up to you. But yeah, I just think money is money is hard earned by most people. So I, 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 I'm, I'm against the gambling thing. Um, come and learn on Friday, Felix runs along slash webinar. I'll run a free live trading training where I show you my entire protocol, where how we up 110% so far on capital employed this year. Um, two more videos coming out later on today. We've had a busy morning. And um, we sat on the beach. We had some nice dinner. Enjoyed the sunset. <laughs> and... Um, Thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you tomorrow.